Hello, welcome once again to um, Indigenous Hands, Indigenous Voices. I know we have missed one week and it was not on purpose. Something happened, but it is also part of, you know, the plan for me to come up with a new series. Today, I'm introducing a new series. And my topic is learn from your indigenous signers before i go ahead i want to celebrate my niger sign up shirts you can see right this is beautiful niger sign up is a brand of the indigenous the indigenous is the project that is coming out of the six years of our research um, documenting indigenous sign languages of African deaf communities. And so right now, very soon, you're going to be hearing a whole lot of the indigenous, the indigenous, the indigenous. But right now you are looking at Niger Sign Up. Niger Sign Up is a brand that is going to be representing the indigenous sign languages that are documented from Nigerian indigenous deaf communities. We are so excited to talk about Niger sign up to talk about the indigenous sign languages of um, different African countries because this is our pride. This is a pride of our indigenous deaf communities. And that is why today I'm introducing a, a new topic, learn from your indigenous signers. I am so happy to be putting on my shirt all the way from Niger. <laughs> Thank you, Esdele, for making it happen all right today we are going to be looking at some of our deaf signers and their stories and so i'm doing this topic today out of popular demand and let me tell you the secret um so since we started documenting the indigenous sign languages we have been somehow unveiling some pieces of it uh, you know in bits and in pieces because we, we've been working and we're still working on this um, sign documentation that we, we did. But, you know, some of, the, some of the deaf signers that we met in the communities are still following our works. And so one of, recently, one of them was like, when are you going to talk about our sign language? And I was so touched by that. And why is that? Because when we want to document, we the the signer signed um, a consent form, um, and they gave us the power to um, go ahead and display their sign language, display their videos, to show their videos on the website on any media that we want to, because they were so happy to have us come to document their indigenous sign languages and it was a very beautiful thing they did okay so that is why we we are not you know afraid to showcase our deaf signers even though we've been doing it with um caution so today i'm beginning a series to take us to one of the communities that we documented and we are going to be looking at their sign language and how things played out with us there is going to be a little bit different from what i've been doing here all this time because here and now you will be seeing and hearing directly from the indigenous deaf signers from nigeria and because of this series i'm doing i, I want to um appeal to the public if you are watching my video today if you belong to an indigenous deaf community whether you are deaf or hearing you are in a position to um, bring us closer to your indigenous sign language you can suggest to us uh, which sign language to talk about or to document or something or if you yourself can uh, showcase one or two uh, words or expressions in your indigenous sign that would be very much appreciated i would be happy to um, show your video on my program here if you can document your own sign language even if it's a word you are you know welcome to send that to us and at some point also i'm gonna be sending out some words that i would like uh people to document and send to us all we need are only indigenous sign languages 
sign languages that have no adulteration of either English signing or anything that is foreign to that indigenous deaf community. That's all we need. And you are going to be very amazed to see how our indigenous signing systems are. And in this series also, I'm going to be looking at the indigenous name signs. And um, as much as we're going to be looking at, I think it's going to take us for a while um, looking at all this together. Okay. Are you ready to roll with me? All right, today's deaf signer we are going to be introducing is Aisha. And Aisha is a deaf signer in Mogajingeri deaf community in Kaduna in Nigeria. And Mogajingeri, we have been talking about it. And since we stepped into that community, it's been a whole lot of relationship that we uh, shared with the deaf community. And so um, we collected um, bios and we collected some of the stories that these deaf signers had to tell us. Let's hear directly from Aisha how she became deaf and a bit of her story. So Aisha became deaf at 10 years of age and she fell. Um, possibly she may have injured some part of her body that connects to the neuro and the auditory system and she was rushed to the hospital. Nothing happened and she was taken to the traditional and they used many many leaves according to her. They used a lot of herbs to try to make sure that she is alright. But eventually, it was that fall that brought about Aisha losing her hearing and today she is a deaf adult. And Aisha's story is typical of, you know, what we hear and what we know of very many deaf persons that we have uh, had encounter with, many of whom became deaf as either adult or grown up children and eventually that became their story. Um, let us hear from Aisha Demore how the parents treated her when she became deaf, how she learned sign language because already you know she is not a native signer because by the time she became deaf, she was already hearing, she was already speaking and she had acquired spoken language and so she found herself in the deaf world from that age.
Aisha's parents accepted the fate and they gave her the love and they supported her and one of the ways you would know that they supported her was that she said that they um, took her to a deaf community and the, she started mingling with other deaf people in the community but one thing they didn't do was to take her to school um, so um, we do not know the reason it may be because of where she was born was it too remote was it you know uh, was there no deaf school around um, because her story suggests that she was introduced into the deaf community which was a very beautiful thing for modeling of language even though she was 10 at the time this happened the parents understood the importance of introducing Aisha to the deaf community now the deaf community to which she was introduced determined the variety of sign language she used and another thing she said here is that the parents themselves knew a little bit of home signs and in this program we have often said that there are some deaf communities in nigeria where you see both hearing and deaf persons having a relatively equal fluency in sign language and this is not always the case in all the deaf communities but in some of them you see hearing people that are very fluent in indigenous sign languages and this was um, Aisha's uh, story because the parents were able to introduce her into the community as early as she identified as deaf she was able to pick up sign language she was able to begin to know how to communicate and today can tell her story in her indigenous sign language proudly this is a system and it goes this way when there is an introduction of a child into a community the child acquires the communal um, language the communal practices and all that the child will not have um, a version or rather a poor linguistic attitude towards her language so Aisha's story should give us another perspective to what we have today that often happens when a deaf child is first of all introduced into the school where the teacher teaching her sign language is possibly a hearing person who learns sign language one way or the other incidentally or accidentally has a very limited vocabulary and generative competence in the language such a deaf person may not be competent linguistically Aisha is a competent and fluent signer of Morgan Jingare sign language because her parents introduced her to the deaf community as soon as she identified deaf what do we learn from Aisha's story today what can you learn a deaf signer a parent of the deaf child you who are found in the deaf community what do you learn from Aisha's story is it not important to introduce a deaf child into an indigenous deaf community where they will acquire the indigenous sign language we are not saying that a deaf child should not go to school no now Aisha's story is also something to learn from in that even at age 10 she was able to pick up and this is because there was a practical direct introduction although she lacks education today which of course is not because she was introduced into the deaf community that is an omission that we do not know the details about but if she was introduced to the school later on where she will also um, be educated she would hardly drop her indigenous sign language knowledge possibly she would have been a bilingual signer like the interviewer so today was about Aisha's story 
Tell me what you learned. You can send us your questions or your responses uh, by sending a comment on the video. You can send us an email at info at .org. Tell us about your indigenous sign language or send us a short video of any expression in your indigenous sign language and we will get in touch with you in this channel we talk about the indigenous we are concerned about the indigenous we have no other business but the indigenous sign languages of african deaf communities very soon we are going to be looking at the indigenous sign languages of the global community all right so this is the indigenous hands, the indigenous voices. Do not forget Aisha story. And I'm going to see you again by next week. And we will also take possibly another version of Aisha story. And I will see you by next week. Stay safe. Bye.